Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're doing a little bit more of a relaxed type video today. I am in my big old fluffy robe. I have my cup of coffee and I'm going to just go over a lot of, they're not necessarily new items in the drugstore, but they're new to me. I did a couple hauls before Thanksgiving and before all the other sales from Walgreens and Ulta and Walmart, and I got a bunch of different drugstore items, and I am wearing a full face of drugstore today. So if you wanna hear about the drugstore items that I use to get this look, then keep on watching. So before we get into this, I'll just tell you that I have an oily skin type. I usually have to blot or touch up at the end of the day, and depending on what I put on my face, if it's not mattifying, then a lot of times I have have to blot within maybe three hours of putting on my makeup. I do have a lot of problems with breakdown around my nose, around my chin, and around my forehead. So that gives you a little bit of background of my skin type as we get into some of these products. To moisturize and prime this morning, I used these two. Now, this moisturizer I have been using for a very long time. It has SPF, it has good um, skin ingredients in it, and it does absorb relatively quickly, and I don't feel that it brings out any of my oils because it's supposed to be oil controlling. Now, this is the only drugstore primer that I have, and I had to like dig it out of my, like, I don't use these products anymore, um, drawers. This is one of those very silicone feeling primers. It, it pore fills. Do I feel like it's the best for my skin type? No, but I just need to explore drugstore primers a little bit more. Now to get into things that are new to me. So I have been trying out all of these products for the past two weeks or so. Um, I've used them with high-end primers, with um, drugstore primers. I've used them with my high-end moisturizers, high-end powders, high-end everything. And these have completely wowed me. And these are the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundations. Now I have it in 705 and 710. I feel like I have to mix these to get my good shade because 705 is a little bit too pink. So this brings it down a little bit. But I mean, the packaging is nice. It has this plastic lid, glass bottle, and a pump that locks. Um, I, these do get a little bit messy, but I have a towel down here that I just wipe the bottle, the, the nozzle off on after I do my pumps. But I have that foundation on today, and I have been actually wearing that foundation pretty much every day for the past week and a half to two weeks. And I love the glow that it gives me. I love the way that that makes my skin look during the day. I'm used to using very mattifying products, so usually by the end of the day, if my oils don't come through and the products have done what they're supposed to do, I still look very, very matte, which by the end of the day can look cakey at times. So I love that these have the vitamins and a little bit more moisture in them, so they bring that life to my skin. I do think that I get oily a little bit sooner with those than with other products. I will say, when I use my high-end primers with that, it looks beautiful. To apply my foundation, I used my Flower Beauty Sponge. And this is the one that I've had for a couple months, but I did buy myself a backup. I really love these sponges. They are so cushy, so, so, so soft. But I use this today, so these are well, well loved. And they're very easy to clean, actually. So I do love my Flower Beauty sponges. For concealers, I use the Maybelline Fit Me, and this is in... Fair 15, and then I used the Instant Age Rewind from Maybelline, and this is in the brightening shade. Now, this is not new to me, and I really like this one, but at times it can sting my eyes if I get it too close up there. But this is new to me, and I have been loving this stuff. You know, the, the sponge tip applicator, it gets kind of dirty, and I necessarily don't really like that, but I like the brightening that it does underneath my eyes. And I like that this is lightweight. It doesn't kind of like cake up into my creases like maybe the, the shape tape would. So I have been very, very impressed with this. And this one I will keep on repurchasing. For powder, I just used my Maybelline Fit Me. This is in 10 Fair. They need to get it in light five just for a little bit more brightening under the eyes but I just use a little real technique sponge and I go in there and I you know get my powder and I set everything down. I got a new brush and this is my first brush from Wet n Wild it's their angled brush and I got this with the intention on doing you know bronzer or contour with it. 
with my brushes with the natural hairs, I'm used to going into my products and just kind of really digging in there and then getting it on. But with this, because it is synthetic, it picks up so much product that I have to learn to get in there with a lighter hand. But I have been very, very impressed with um, the quality of this. I washed this last night, that's why it's not dirty. But I have been very impressed with um, the quality of this brush and I want to try some more brushes from Wet n Wild because I think that this was 59 cents and you can't beat that because the one from Sigma that's been in my wish list forever is about um, $26. The bronzer and the blush that I used today are not new to me but I used my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer which I've hit pan on and then I used this um, CoverGirl True Blend Blush in Light Rose on my cheeks it's one of those domed bake blushes, but this just has a very pretty, and these rosy colors are not usually my thing, but I just felt like I wanted to go with more of a rosy look today since I do have um, a purple on the eyes. I did get a new highlighter. I got the Wet n Wild highlighter in Boozy Brunch, and this is just one of those like mosaic type highlighters that when you swirl in there, you just get this really gorgeous, gold color right there and this might be a little bit too dark for my skin tone but I feel like if I go in with a really light hand that I can really just get a nice little glow from it now you can see like fine micro glitters on your skin whenever you put this on but I just take one of my um, big stippling brushes and I just go over everything and kind of blend it out and that kind of dissipates those and just leaves that nice glow behind. So, so far I've been using this a couple times during the week and I'm really, really enjoying this. I've gotten really into more eyeshadows and trying more cream eyeshadows as well. So I have quite a bit of new eye products. Now I couldn't put all of these on my eyes today, but I did go ahead and I used three of these products on my eyes today. So the first thing that I used is the Wet n Wild um, Nude Awakening Palette. And it came kind of beat up and scuffed up from Ulta, but it was still, the seal wasn't broken, so I wasn't too worried about it. But just the fact that the packaging was a little beat up, I was, but I mean, it's $4. But these are the colors. Um, the one thing I will say about this palette that I wish was a little bit different was there's no kind of, there's these light kind of rose goldy shades and light shades and then in this taupe and then it just goes into these dark shades here. There's not really a good transition shade in the middle. And so a lot of times if I'm doing an all drugstore look, I'll go in and I'll use my bronzer as a transition shade and then I'll just use the rest of these. But today I used this taupe kind of all over and then I went in and deepened my crease a little bit with this kind of purpley brown. And then I used a little bit of this matte white up on the brow bone and probably a little bit of this shimmer on the under eye too. But I kind of just dabbled in this palette a little bit. The mattes kick up quite a bit of powder. Um, these kind of shimmery ones kick up quite a bit and the satin ones um, are all right with kick up, but really the um, mattes and the shimmers are really gonna be the ones that pick up the most. But here's a couple, there's a matte, there's a shimmer, and there's a satin. I mean, they're beautiful colors and the pigmentation is beautiful. So you just gotta really make sure you tap off your brush or go in with a light hand with some of these. The next items are all cream eyeshadows and usually from the drugstore you know you get your cream eyeshadows in these pots. So I have two from Revlon, I have um, 705 and this one is creme brulee and then I have 740 which this is black currant and the black currant one is this pretty sparkly purple one and that's the one I have all over my lid today. But these ones they come with a little brush in the lid but I haven't really been using this I have a flat um, I have a flat concealer brush from Sigma and this is what I've been using for my cream shadows to really pack everything on but that there is black currant and that there is creme brulee so I have that all over the lid and I have this kind of popped into the inner corner to give me a little bit of shimmer these crease on me 
So I can put them on in the morning and I, I, I'll preface this by saying that when I use the cream eyeshadows, I usually don't use an eyeshadow primer and maybe that's where I need to change things up. But I don't know if having the eyeshadow primer would make the cream shadows stay any more than they normally do because I'm putting down um, powder shadows before I put these cream shadows on. So they kind of, they crease on me and they kind of disappear by the end of the day. I will have the glitter still on my eyelid, but I will only have maybe the color in the creases where it hasn't faded away. So I'm not completely blown away by the Revlon ones, but I maybe want to try a color more or two. I'm also not too crazy about their color selection. And maybe that's kind of where I got these two and that's where I maybe wanted to stay. But I'm going to keep trying them. I'm going to try to um, get them to work or stay with different things. But these may end up in a um, maybe a fails video. I also have a Maybelline color tattoo. And this one is bad to the bronze. And this one is very well known because, you know, we all love that bronzy rose gold color. But this is what it looks like. I mean, the pigmentation on these are so much better than the Revlon ones, and the staying power on these are also amazing. So this I can put on in the morning, and it is still there by the end of the day. The The whole color tattoo part where it stays on there, that is absolutely 100%. I do want to get a couple more colors of these, but again, I'm not too impressed with the color selection they have on these either. So maybe if they come out with different ones, or I want to maybe try the liquefied version in the concealer type, type tubes. I wanna try those and see if I like those a little bit better. But I mean, this is just gorgeous, and it looks like that on the lid. It goes on perfectly with that concealer brush that I use. It is just beautiful. And even right now with this makeup wipe, it does not wanna come off. So that is a testament to how awesome that cream shadow is. The last one that I got, and I wanted to throw this in there, I, I've, put, I've put this on my eyes once, and I can't really give you guys a, a good opinion of it, but I did wanna kind of include it in my haul, and this is one of the L'Oreal Infallible Cream Shadows, and this is in um, Gilded Envy. So these ones come with these little like stopper tops, and they tell you keep these, because that's what keeps the, the product probably to stay moist but I want to try to get into more um, green eyeshadow looks and I'll have to, I have a, I have a haul coming up with green eyeshadows. So I'll have to kind of, once the, those come in the mail, I'll put that up for you. But this is the color there. And these are just, again, beautiful and pigmented. And I cannot wait to try these out more and really tell you guys what I think. Now, I get these from Walmart because they don't carry these at Ulta. And the Walmart by me, the, the selection on these is always horrible. So I might end up having to go to like a Walgreens or a CVS or something and try to find some more in these because the color range in these is amazing, but they're always sold out of them at my Walmart. While we're still focusing on the eyes, next I picked up a backup of the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. Now this is my favorite mascara to go in first on my lashes. Um, my lashes like to kind of tangle with each other, and so I feel that after I curl them, this really helps to separate them, kind of keep that curl in, keep that length in, and then I usually go over with a volumizing mascara, and then I go back in with the clump crusher to really separate those lashes back out and give me the volume at the bottom, but really that fanned look at the top. So I will always have one of these in my collection. The other mascara that I picked up is this um, Maybelline Lash Discovery Mini Brush Waterproof. I don't know if I meant to pick it up in waterproof, but since I'm only gonna be using this for the lower lashes, I'm not upset that it's waterproof because hopefully that will keep it from transferring to my lower lash line. But this is the size of the brush on it. I mean, tiny, tiny, tiny. And it really does. It gets into the outer corner over there because like I said, my lashes not only tangle with each other up top, but they like to tangle with each other in the corners. So this gets into those corners and really separates out those lashes. And then it also gets into the inner corner and gets all those like baby lashes that are in there. 
and this has been amazing. I'm cleaning up less underneath my eyes because while this wand right here isn't that big, when you're trying to get it into little eye places, this can get messy too. So I'm really, really enjoying this. As far as the waterproofness, I don't find I have any trouble getting it off. I use the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm on my eyes every night and that takes this right off. So I am really, really enjoying this and it's making it so much easier for me to do my lower mascara in the morning. Next, let's move on to brows. So I have been a consistent brow pomade type of girl forever and I use the Anastasia Dip Brow in Blonde. And so I just, I didn't wanna try out pencils. I had been sent some eyebrow pencils in like Boxy Charms or something like that and I just didn't like them. I wasn't a fan of them, they took too long. But I said, let me try one of these out. So this is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Shape and Fill. Now this has that teardrop shaped um, applicator just kind of like the, um, Anastasia brow definer I think it is so I wanted to see how I liked using this before I went and spent my money on the ABH one so this has a spoolie at one end and the spoolie is very soft I will say that I enjoy that soft spoolie and then it just has like I said that that twist up teardrop shaped product at this end um, I used it, of course, in my brows today. I did end up going in with a little bit of the NYX Brow Mascara in Blonde to give me a little bit of highlight, and then I set everything down with the NYX Control Freak. Because I'm used to a pomade where it gets in your brows and kind of acts as a gel as well, I do think that you need to have an eyebrow gel if you're gonna be using a pencil just to set everything down and keep it in place because I have some wild eyebrows and so sometimes I really just need to set those things down. This is the color blonde right here. Because it's a little bit more of a firmer pencil, I think that it pulls at your brow hairs a little bit more and so I've seen like a couple brow hairs come off on this thing. But do I think that that's a deal breaker for this? No, because this is so quick, so easy. It looks natural, it looks beautiful. If I'm ever in a rush in the morning and don't have time to sit there for five minutes and do my brows with the pomade, this is what I'm turning to. So I'm excited about trying. I know NYX has one and I actually have that on order from Ulta. So I wanna compare this one to the NYX one and then if I love them both, maybe I'll go ahead and splurge on the ABH one as well. To set down this makeup look today, I used the L'Oreal Infallible Setting Spray. This is new to me, I did haul this recently, and um, thing with me in setting sprays, I use mattifying setting sprays. So I use the um, Cover Effects Mattifying and I use the um, Urban Decay D-Slick one. Those are like my two holy grails. So I wanted to see if I can find something from the drugstore that let's say that I don't have the money at the time to restock those, what can I go to next? And this one here may be a good contender. Now, the spray, it's it's pretty aggressive, but I like that. We ended up getting the Cover Effects Illuminating one in a BoxyCharm last month, and whenever I spray that one, I feel like I can't feel anything at all. And because I am oily, because I use quite a bit of setting powder, I want something that is going to set all that down and lock it all down. So I almost want to saturate my face before I go back in with my sponge and set everything down. So I actually really enjoy the kind of like soaking spray of this. Now, it's not like it's just spitting globs at you. It does still have a pretty fine mist to it. So overall, I am really, really enjoying this. Do I feel that this keeps on my makeup the same amount as my higher end ones? Probably not. Um, I might want to end up doing something where I do my makeup like I normally would and then like put a piece of paper in the middle of my face and spray this half with this and this half with like my D-Slick which is my like ride or die setting spray and then at the end of the day see which one held my makeup up the best. So, but overall, I think that this is a great contender. So the final items that I got are lips and I'll start off with this Neutrogena Lip Balm. Now I got it in the shade Caramel and I mean it just has a little bit of a tint to it but when you put it on your, your lips or your hand, you, that tint doesn't really come through but I'm really looking at this more or less for the 
like lip ingredients in it and how it makes my lips feel. So when I sit down to do my makeup in the morning, I put this on and it has been amazing. It just glides on perfectly. I like the shape of this over my traditional like round Burt's Bees ones that I have, but this has really been a win in my book. And I don't really look at Neutrogena a whole lot whenever I'm in the drugstore because I mean, this packaging is just so nondescript. And you know, you see a lot of other packaging where it, like, this is one that I'm gonna talk about, this Milani one. So I mean, it's pretty in gold and it has this frosted glass and I mean, you would walk right by this and your eye catches this. While Neutrogena may have really good products, their section in the store just kind of fades into the background with all the other like marketing and packaging type things that other brands are doing. But nevertheless, um, really, really enjoying this. And I believe this has SPF 20. So this is really good for your lips, even to throw on on like those no makeup days. Since I already held it up, this is the Milani Moisture Lock Coconut Oil Infused Lip Treatment. Now, it has this huge doe foot applicator and don't mind it, it has red on it because I've put it on over other lipsticks. And it's just this clear um, oil. And again, it's just very, very shiny. This is all right. I feel that it wears off the lips very quickly. It feels good when you first put it on, but then within five minutes, it's not there anymore. The doe foot, while it's nice and big, is actually rough. Um, like you think of most doe foots on, on other lip products, they're nice and soft, they just glide right on. This almost feels like it's like scrubbing your lips as you're putting it on. So the doe foot probably needs a little bit of work. Am I reaching for this as much as I probably should? No, but it's also, it underwhelmed me. So I'll just put that there, underwhelming. I have two other lip products. This is the Revlon, um, this is the Ultra HD Gel Lipstick, and this is in HD Sand. This is what the packaging looks like, comes with a little lid. Um, I've heard so many good things about these. This shade here, um, when I'm not wearing anything else, this is kind of a My Lips But Better type shade. And while I enjoy the formula, I think that I want to get another shade that actually shows up on my lips so that I'm not just like, oh, well, my lips are a little bit shiny and they're comfortable now, but very comfortable formula, very nice to put on, don't need a lip liner with it. Um, the This, I think, looked a little bit streaky on my lips and that's also why I want to get a deeper shade just so I can really see what the formula looks like on my lips because from far away, it looked really awesome. But if I got up close, like in my simple human mirror or even like one of my little mirrors like this, it did look a little bit streaky on my lips. But again, you couldn't tell because this is about the color of what my lips are naturally. And the last product that I ended up picking up is another NYX Butter Gloss. Now this is one of the intense ones because they have, I guess, the regular line and then the intense line. And I can understand why they call it that. This shade is in Toasted Marshmallow and I have this on my lips, but I ended up blotting it because holy moly, this is pigmented. Let me put this on my hand for you guys. Like when I thought gloss, I was like, cool, a gloss, no. Look at that. It is so flippin' pigmented. And I, I just, I couldn't get over it. And I looked at a bunch of swatches online before I picked out this, um, this color because I didn't go in store and swatch anything. So I think I need to get another color that isn't so deep because I'm kind of scared of deeper gloss colors just because I talk all day for work and this does get on your teeth if you, you know, if you don't blot and things like that. All I did today was I went in with a L'Oreal lip liner in Lasting Plum and I just kind of lined my lips a little bit. That's Lasting Plum. Actually, that's a pretty good match. Good job, Erin. And I did that around, I put this on, I let it sit for a little bit and then I blotted because this does stain your lips. So you still get that nice color, but without that like intensity and that fear that that gloss is going to um, rub off on everything. Now, again, I went, I showed you that the tip of this was red and that's because I put this on over over that red lip liner and over this butter gloss. Now, again, my lips are nice and shiny again, but I have been talking for maybe 20 minutes or so, and that had completely rubbed off. 
So give yourself 20 minutes and this is gone and then you gotta reapply, but it does feel nice on the lips. I thought the next one was my last lip product. I lied, it's this one. I got the Milani Sugar Scrub. Um, I have been enjoying this. I originally had the e.l.f. Lip Exfoliant uh, Lipsticks, and those are okay, but again, those have bigger granules in them, and I wanted something a little bit um, more sensitive for my lips, and so this Sugar Scrub has been amazing. I have a hard time finding this in stores where I'm at, but I was able to find this online, so I am really enjoying this Sugar Scrub. The standout products of this haul, I really do think the setting spray, I think is really gonna be a nice alternative to my higher end ones. Um, the Vitalist uh, foundation has been amazing and I'm really enjoying wearing this in the colder months to really put that like moisture and that glow back into my skin. Um, of course, I love my Flower Beauty sponges. These are amazing. The color tattoos have never let me down. This has made lower lash mascara a dream. This really surprised the crap out of me, so I've really been enjoying this one. This is super pretty, and I can't wait to try this on my eyes as well. I've really been enjoying throwing this in my pocket during the day and also using this before makeup. And then really these Wet n Wild brushes have blown me away. So I am looking forward to picking up some more of these. I don't think I'm gonna get the whole set. You know, they have at um, CVS, I think, they have like the $30 set with a bunch of Wet n Wild brushes. I don't think I need all of those, but I am going to pick and choose some brushes that I feel will work for what my needs are, but this has really blown me away. I do have my Black Friday and Cyber Monday hauls coming your way. I'm just waiting for some stuff from Sephora and Ulta and I hope to get that to you soon. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me while I'm in my big fluffy robe. I'm shooting my Stitch Fix video after this so I didn't want to get out of my PJs until I started getting on those clothes. I hope you enjoyed this video about my opinion of this drugstore makeup and how I kind of got this drugstore look. I've been really, really enjoying these products. Leave me a thumbs up if you like this video or found it helpful. Leave me a comment below with some of the drugstore items that you have been loving and things that I need to try out. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.